Hello and welcome to art class. We're going to draw a realistic horse in pencil today. We'll start out with just some basic shapes on which to build the structure of the horse, but we'll erase these lines later. So as you begin, draw very, very lightly. Start with a circle right in the middle of your paper. I'm using a sketching technique. I'm just brushing the paper very, very lightly, almost like I was brushing crumbs off of the paper with a feather. On either side of your original circle, make two more circles that overlap it, like this. Okay, so something like this. My circles are not perfect, but that's okay. They don't need to be. This is just to get us started. Now we're going to draw a box around those three circles. The neat thing about a horse's body is that it fits pretty nicely inside a square. So the circles are going to represent the horse's body and then the sides of the square will show us how long his legs need to be and will help us place his legs. I'm measuring across the top of the circles and then making a mark that is the same distance down. That way my square is fairly even, but I'm not using a rule or anything, just eyeball it. Go ahead and sketch some very, very light lines. Remember, these are just guidelines. We're not keeping these. They're just helping us get started. Okay, now make a mark where the circle touches the square right there on the top and on the side and draw a line between those two marks. This represents the base of the horse's neck. So we're going to use a triangle to establish where his neck is. This will be the guide that helps us place his neck. And it's a bit of a judgment call how long it needs to be. You might need to experiment around. Again, if you draw lightly, it's easy to erase. When you're satisfied with your triangle, put a circle at the top of it like this. That's going to be the horse's head, the beginning of his head. And then a smaller circle right about here will represent the horse's muzzle. Now this is kind of starting to look horsey, isn't it? And if you draw a line connecting those circles, that establishes its head. Okay, so let's give our horse some forelegs. Starting at the bottom of that first circle, we're going to extend lines down to the base of the square but a horse's leg is not actually perfectly straight to the ground. Um, first, we want to make note of where his legs would bend if he were in motion. So we'll draw a circle for the knee and then continue on down. That next joint above the hoof is called the fetlock. And then the area between the hoof and the fetlock is sloping. That's called the pastern. It actually angles forward from the leg a little bit. So we'll just angle that forward and draw the hoof. And then moving on to the back leg. Make a line for the belly. And the hind leg is even more crooked than the front leg because it has this angle at the top. It actually goes back before it goes down. So it goes back toward the side of the square we drew. We can use that as a guide. Again, a circle for the joint where the leg bends and then straight down to the fetlock and then the angle of the pastern forward to the hoof. If at any point you want to pause the video, study these angles, that's fine, you can do that. And then we're going to connect the hind leg back up to the body with this gentle curve going up to the, back to the square and the circle. So far we've been sketching. We've been using very light lines and many, many lines, one on top of the other, to find where we want to make our final marks. So when you're sure of a line, when you know you want to keep it and you like the look of it, you can press harder and you can even go over and over the same spot to establish 
the final outline of your shape. So as we slowly move around the horse, darkening up the lines that we know we want to keep, you'll notice I haven't been doing any erasing. I'm just ignoring the lines that I'll be getting rid of later. I'm focusing right now on the lines I want to keep and adding a few little details like where the leg joins into the body and so forth. Now we'll go ahead and give him another leg on the other side. To make it look like it's further away than the first one we drew, we'll draw it slightly shorter. And then we'll do the same for his other foreleg. The process of drawing is a process of continually making decisions. If we give ourselves permission to build the drawing line upon line upon line, or to sketch very lightly and only decide later which lines we want to keep by making them dark, later is so much more forgiving and so much more fun than drawing a line really hard and not liking it and having to erase it, and then drawing another line really hard and not liking that one and having to erase it. So much more fun to sketch than to erase. So I'm going back over the horse's top line now, his neck, his withers, which are the shoulders, and his back, and then adding some details. So let's focus on the head here for a minute. We'll add some details and, and fill this in. The horse's nose is shaped something like that. Their mouth and chin look like that. A horse has a big round jaw and it joins in with the neck in a graceful curve. So we'll give that a little bit more of a curve there. And then down to the shoulders, blending all of our lines together smoothly and neatly and then going back and fixing things that we think need a little bit extra attention. You can add details like the eye and the mane. The eye from this angle is going to look something like a diamond shape and the nostril like a letter C. So adding the mane and tail, the tail is actually an extension of the spine. And of course, then it's got this long flowing hair that hangs down at this point, your horse is almost finished. So you can take a kneaded eraser and clean up the lines you no longer need. These would be the circles that we drew originally and the square and any sketch lines that you decide you don't want. Now's the time to get rid of them. Okay, so now that you've got your drawing pretty cleaned up and you're down to the basic sketch, just the lines you want to keep, you can go back and fix any areas that need redrawing. I got a little bit enthusiastic with the eraser around the eye, for instance. And then it's time to start adding in some details. Of course, if you're drawing a particular horse, it's great to have a photograph to look at, if not the horse itself, but we can make some general assumptions. We will assume, for instance, that there's a light source coming from above, that the horse is out in the sun, and so therefore there would be shadows on the underside of the horse, like around the jaw here, there would be a deep shadow under the jaw and along the bottom edge of the throat. And of course that principle will carry through the entire animal that all of the lower parts would be shaded and the upper parts would be reflecting light, would be in the sun. So I'm just going to slowly and carefully 
holding my pencil on its side to get that broad stroke, work my way across my drawing, changing my pressure according to how dark I want the shadow to be in that area. You can layer up your applications of, of lines. You can blend with your fingertips. That can be overdone. It can look really smeary and messy, but it's a legitimate technique. Your fingers are good tools. So if you think something needs a little blending, you can smudge it a bit and you can also use your kneaded eraser to go back in and pick out areas that need to be cleaned up. If you find you've shaded it too darkly or you went to emphasize a highlight, the kneaded eraser is a great tool for that.
I think it is almost possible to draw forever. You could always find something that you want to fix or another detail you could add or make little refinements and adjustments here and there, but at some point you just have to let it be done. So I think I'll just clean up a couple of spots, pick out a highlight here and there and call it finished. I hope you've enjoyed making art as much as I have. Stay creative and I'll see you again soon.